Hi, I'm David. I'm the CMO at Klarna, a Swedish payments company founded to make e-commerce as simple and smooth as, as humanly possible. We've now turned global and much more into a shopping experience and shopping service for consumers around the globe. So uh, for those of you who don't know us, just to give you a basic sense of, uh, of how we operate, I mean, we do plus 1 million transactions each day. We have 20 million app downloads, people who really use our app. Uh, we have 85 million shoppers, loads of different fantastic retailers, and we're still, uh, despite our size, seeing a tremendous growth to, to our business. And, and we're very fortunate to, to also be working with a couple of the biggest and, and uh, most admirable brands in the world. But, but far beyond that, and what I do think is more important is that beyond the rational things, what we're really seeing is somewhat of a perfect storm of you know, changing consumer behavior, digitalization, e-commerce growing big. So we are lucky enough to be at the center of a, a new era of shopping at the moment. So everyone at Klarna really, really beyond the rational things works just relentlessly on, on defining a new era of shopping, um, which is a blessing basically for me. And, and I keep on telling my teams that even if we're not around in 10 years time, I do think that we now have the opportunity to be able to be part of a time that we look back upon and say, we were part of changing how the world shops, basically. So today I thought I'd give you some insight into how we work with our brand, how marketing has been a key function in, in really developing and growing the business forward and uh, hope to give you a couple of insights. What we're trying to build basically at the heart of it is really a brand for a new generation of online shoppers. Shopping has changed tremendously. Brands haven't really adapted to that. So, so there's a huge opportunity for us. And I do think being a bit philosophical, this comes from a time where, you know, the distrust in banks, the distrust in financial services are at an all time low. If we look back a couple of years, this was just a symbolic time when the tides turned uh, against financial companies. And since then, there hasn't really been a brand, a company uh, that caters to, to the consumer needs. Uh, instead, although everyone knowing this, all of our competitors knowing this, if you look at our industry, it still looks the same and it has always looked the same, although the times have changed. Everyone's blue, everyone is male, everyone is boring. It feels like talking to a lawyer. And if we look at some of the more fun data, you can see that like, a vast majority of, of US millennials would rather go to the dentist than, than visit their bank. I mean, that is really something. And, and I do believe that our opportunity as Klarna and one that we've started to seize is that we operate in an industry that has completely lost touch. We know that consumer behavior has changed tremendously, like just a couple of examples without going through all of them. We can see that there are just completely new consumer demands ranging from a greater experience and a focus on UX to hyper-personalization or just the fact that we need to take climate concerns or privacy uh, seriously in a completely new way. So the industry hasn't really kept up. So the thing we're trying to do at Klarna is really shape a new kind of brand and a new kind of company that caters to, to a new generation of online shoppers. So we see ourselves partly as obviously reshaping the way that the world shops, but also reshaping the world of finance. And we do that through three big pillars in both our product offering, but also in our marketing. We focus a lot on convenience. This is what our target group appreciates a lot, just the ease, simplicity and safety and personalization around online shopping. Convenience is one big leg. Inspiration is something that, that my category and my industry has been lacking for, for quite a while. Uh, I think everyone can agree to the fact that it was a long time ago since you felt inspired by your bank. But inspiration is a huge part of today's culture, uh, ranging in everything from you see the creators on TikTok to just all the influencers out there, like inspiration is just such a big part of society. And finally, perks, just being able to give back, not always in cash, but in benefits and services, really feeling that it makes sense to be part of Klarna. Uh, so those are the three big things that we work with. And, and that has 
influenced and informed our communicative platform that we call Smooth Shopping. So basically all of the things that we do, they trickle down to what we call Smooth. And I mean, it seems to be working. If we look at what's happening around the world, people really appreciate what we do at Klarna. Uh, we can see that through the number of app downloads, which is a really good proxy for a popularity of an app. We are one of the most downloaded apps and, uh, and popular apps in the US at the moment on, on spot number seven. But we can also see that from the recognition for many different things that we do from the outside. One of the things that we're the most proud of is being recognized as one of the, the top 50 disruptors in the world by CNBC, which is a huge accomplishment. So, I mean, it seems to be working. And I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes into just giving you, now that you have the context and the backdrop a bit to our business, but also to, to what we want to achieve as a brand and really the stick in the ground that we have when it comes to changing the way that the world shops. I thought I'd give you some insight into how we work, obviously from a brand and marketing perspective. And, and the structure I thought about was giving you uh, some insight and info into our beliefs. So basically what informs our behavior? What do we really believe in? The strategy that we apply, which is fairly basic, but we execute relentlessly on it. And then a couple of principles that we always apply to every single thing that we do. So I start out with, with guiding you through three of the beliefs that really inform our behavior at Klarna. And the first belief is probably the one that, that resonates the strongest with me. And, and it is that we truly believe in design. I personally believe that design or especially beauty is something that is, it's almost not explored enough. It is something that is extremely important to people. I think we can see that in art. We can see that through history and music. I mean, there's just so much that happens within us when, when things are beautiful. And, and historically, this has been restricted to a couple of areas. But I do think what has happened throughout time is that more and more categories, more and more industries uh, understand that design and beauty and just this tactile feeling of something being fantastic um, really drives business. Um, I, I, I usually bring up the example with, with Steve Jobs being the first genius who really designed technology. Those two categories weren't, weren't at all connected before. Like you had high performing but ugly electronics and then you had design and beauty and stuff over here with, uh, with fashion or something. Like I see really the design industry merging into so many different spaces right now. And that is also why, why we four years ago um, set ourselves on a journey to change this, which was extremely functional and extremely well performing but not beautiful into something that is more in tune with, with our belief. Because again, we believe that design can influence any industry, not only the classical industries, but, but I think really Steve Jobs paved the way for us to understand, like, can you really design and make an MP3 player beautiful? Yes, you can. Why shouldn't that be possible for a financial service? So we've put our hearts and soul into really making sure that we don't take it for granted that a bank or a financial service cannot be beautiful. We just don't believe in that. The second belief we have is pop culture. And that is basically based on the fact that I do think that all great brands need to strive for being part of a discussion, being part of the dinner table conversations. And there is no better vehicle for that than pop culture. Like we have to be honest with ourselves and, and to most of you listening as well, like ours and your products by themselves aren't interesting enough to engage with. They aren't interesting enough to talk about at scale, um, which is fine, like everything can't be. But I do think really connecting to pop culture, really understanding pop culture means you connect to the strongest possible vehicle that is gonna enable those discussions. So believing in pop culture, understanding pop culture, although the world keeps telling me that banks and Klarna shouldn't have anything to do with pop culture, we just don't believe in that. So when we do things, we're always looking for elements that resonate with what's going on around us. So recently we did a big collab with uh, Animal Crossing, a popular game where we did a shoppable island, really pushing entertainment into shopping, connecting that with personal finance in a way that people a couple of years ago would have said, you shouldn't do that, that isn't possible. We're just really paving the way for connecting our services to pop culture. And also in the UK, we keep on seeing that where we really become a household brand that people use as 
almost a verb, like klarning stuff. Um, and I do think that that is extremely important, getting into the everyday language of people with your brand. That means you've really started to push into pop culture and becoming a part of the conversation that goes beyond your advertising or beyond your products. The final belief, and, and this sounds a bit cheesy, but what I mean with that is that like believing in diversity really means that we believe in what I would say perspectives and cross-functional teams. So um, this is obviously the most cheesy picture of, uh, of today, but, but um, the belief that we have that marketing and branding isn't something that should be done by marketeers or designers or branders only, but really putting together cross-functional team of analysts, product people, engineers, uh, lawyers, marketeers, PR people to really crack the branding problems that we have. Because I do think that historically marketing has been too isolated to a marketing department and that is the reason why it hasn't taken off. We need to understand the business, we need to understand the consumers, we need to understand compliance, we need to understand our products. So the way in which we operate at Klarna is truly with cross-functional teams and that is at the heart of everything we do. We don't have any single team that is uh, consisting of only marketeers. So perspectives and diversity is really something we believe. Cool, so going over to the strategy, and, and, and this is quite basic, um, influenced a lot by what we've learned from our partners, but it's basically just a structure to how we operate and how we spend our energy. And, and it's, it's quite simplistic, but we execute relentlessly on it. It's basically three levels where we put more energy into the bottom levels. So we have our essentials, we have our communities and we have our hype. This is how we structure all of our marketing efforts that we do. We put a lot of effort into really establishing a baseline of essentials, which is our always on thinking, always being present in the market in as many channels with as broad reach as possible. We have a community thinking where we really try to connect to current interesting communities and uh, engage them uh, with our products, with our brand, with our services, together with them. And then from time to time, we do hype campaigns where we really go big, where we try to make an, an impact and, and, and really like push the boundaries of the brand and the company. So if we look at the essentials, something that is often uh, overlooked in my opinion, it is really about being leading and world-class when it comes to your everyday work. We've put loads and loads of effort into our social media concepts. We've put loads of efforts into our CRM and into our email programs. And that is also something that I do think sets us apart where there are a lot of companies and a lot of agencies and a lot of players. They put all of their time, effort and money into the big fun TV campaigns and they forget their base. So what we've promised ourselves in our strategy is that we want to be world-class when it comes to the essentials. When it world-class subject lines in our emails. It sounds so mundane, sometimes it sounds boring, but I do believe that this is where the winners are created. If you can create the most fantastic headline to an email, you will be able to make a big film on TV. So really, really being relentless on the quality execution and all of our emails, all of our send outs, push notification, FAQs, the way we answer our customer support, that is at the heart of what we do. And then we obviously have a couple of other things like Clarnival that we just launched, which is an initiative to, to counteract all of the canceled festivals due to the pandemic where we actually try to do something on a broader scale. We try to have a couple of those a year as well. So, so that really compri um, comprises the essentials that we do. And this is where I want my teams to really excel. And, and again, I think that that is not counterintuitive, but, but uh, countering to how many other companies work. Secondly, a couple of times per year, we do what we call community campaigns. This is really a driving force for showcasing our product, showcasing the customer value, our customer proposition to a different kind of target audience and really being in lockstep with them. And I do think the reason for that is that it's so hard nowadays to spark a general global interest. Like there are very few topics that everyone is interested in. 
So instead, we've shifted our strategy towards communities where we basically team up with strong communities that have a strong interest, a strong visual identity, and that like our services. And we've done really fun and epic things together with that community. Um, for example, a year ago, we teamed up with the drag queen community in the US in a campaign called Shop Like a Queen. We teamed up with the most influential drag queens from, uh, from RuPaul's Drag Race. We did all sorts of raffles and demos and competitions. And, and we even arranged a concert together with them. I mean, it's just a way for us to connect, really connect with the target audience beyond our proposition and really going into to, to their interest in their world and understanding how we can make, make their life easier. And we've continued on that. Um, a half year ago, we teamed up with the dog lover community, also a community that has huge passion for, well, dogs, um, seeing how we can team up with them. We opened a dog grooming saloon. We had like great content around dogs and wh what you need to buy for your dogs if you love them, things like that. So just teaming up with them. The latest stunt we did together with the community is was with the Sneakerheads community. Um, that, that really is a community that is super passionate about the products, love, loves content and information around them. And, and we, we really wanted to do something for and with that community. So what we said was basically, if you know the sneaker community, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's often based on drops of really, really hot sneakers. So what we, and, and that business is uh, over flooded by bots at the moment. So what we did in a campaign called Heartbeats for Sneakers, we crafted that campaign together with the, um, with the community. And they said, isn't it possible to um, circumvent the entire bot industry by measuring your heartbeat when you enter a sneaker raffle? So basically in order to win the hottest drops, you didn't just enter the raffle, but you entered with your heartbeat. And the more engaged you were, the higher heartbeat you had when you entered, the higher chance you had of winning. So just really connecting with different communities, adding value to them and going in depth together with our products instead of just going broad. We do that through the, through the community campaigns. And then finally, once or twice a year, we do what we call hype campaigns, which is basically doing something that ha is going to have a profound impact on how our brand is seen. This is where we stretch beyond the essentials and the basics, beyond just one community, and really try to, to put a stick in the ground for what kind of brand we want to be. Um, this year we had a big campaign called Get What You Love with Lady Gaga, and uh, previous years we've worked with Snoop Dogg where he changed his name to Smooth Dogg because he was just such a big fan of our products. Um, these are the things that, that really push the limits for our brand and, and pave the way for where we want to go next. But we can't only be dependent on them. As I said, we spend loads, loads of time and energy and effort on the essentials. Once those are done, we focus on community campaigns and really connecting and going deep with communities. And then once or twice a year, we do big splashes together with Snoop or Lady Gaga, and that has worked out well. I thought I'd make my closing remarks by giving you some insight into the principles that we apply. And, and they are both quite simplistic, but also somewhat cheesy and, and uh, cutting straight to the point. What we talk a lot about at Klarna is that we want to create sick marketing. And with sick marketing, we basically mean that everything that we do should have scale. We don't believe in too many micro activities because we think that marketing is something that people need to talk about, engage with. And the more people have seen something, the easier it is to talk and engage in that topic. So really reaching scale and also connected to that impact because there's just so much noise out there. And I mean, we have two levers to pull. We either have money or we have creativity and, and versus other banks and players, we're not, we're, we don't have the deep pockets, but we do have loads and loads of creativity to utilize. So the impact uh, part is really important to us. The C is about conversion, which basically means that we know from all of our data that liking doesn't build behavior, but behavior builds liking, basically. So what I'm saying with that is just because people like Klarna, they're not going to use Klarna. But if people start using Klarna, they are going to like Klarna because the products are just fantastic. So in everything we do, we aim at behavioral conversion. 
I do think there are so many companies out there that do general brand campaigns but don't have the conversion because they are stuck in an old belief that that attitude builds behavior. And, and that is just so wrong because it's the other way around. Behavior builds attitude. And finally, as I've said before, um, being a tech company, being an entrepreneurial company and being a challenger brand, creativity is really at the heart of everything we do, ranging from our products to our go-to-market activities to the actual execution. So creativity is something that we try to nourish every single day at Klarna. With that said, I think I've guided you through a bit about what Klarna is, how we really aim at changing the world, uh, changing the way the world shops. Um, I've talked a bit about our beliefs that guide us, uh, which are big and fluffy. We have a strategy that we apply on three levels, and finally our principles that, that, we, um, that we use to evaluate every single thing that we do. Thank you.